Welcome everyone. We are so happy you are here with us. You could be many other places tonight. Well, actually, probably not uh, if you're sheltering in place, but you could be on another Zoom call or you could be watching TV. So we really appreciate you choosing Lion Martin Health Services Virtual Rainbow Celebration. I'm Vitka Eisen, I'm the CEO of Health Right 360, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to the 40th anniversary celebration of Lion Martin Health Service Center and the 50th anniversary of Pride. Tonight, we are honoring our history, as well as the life and legacy of Phyllis Lyon, who passed away this year on April 9th at the age of 95. Tonight, you'll hear from and meet individuals who are part of the tapestry of Lyon Martin Health Services. This clinic is a clinic with resilience and a survivor spirit. It has been a healthcare institution for over 40 years and survived as the little clinic that could. Lion Martin Health Services has always had initiative, resourcefulness, drive, motivation, but mostly it has had the support of a community that knows and respects its value, why it was created and needed in 1980, and why it is needed even more now as we endure both the COVID-19 pandemic and attacks on healthcare access for LGBTQ people. Tonight, we will also salute and hug close to our hearts the memories of Phyllis Lyon and Del Martin, two lesbian icons who moved the needle further toward the LGBTQ rights we continue to fight for today. I wanna welcome our first speaker this evening, Supervisor Rafael Mandelman, representing District 8 on the San Francisco Board of Supervisors, which includes the Castro, Glen Park, Noe Valley, Diamond Heights, and Mission Dolores. Supervisor Mandelman is the only LGBTQ member of the Board of Supervisors. Supervisor Mandelman has been a champion for the LGBTQ plus community during his time on the Board of Supervisors, championing the city's efforts to implement sexual orientation and gender identity data collection, authoring legislation to create the Castro LGBTQ Cultural District, and declaring the Lesbian Gay Freedom Band the official band of San Francisco. As a member of the Budget Committee, Supervisor Mandelman fought for funding in the 2019-2020 budget to support transitional housing for trans youth, LGBTQ senior services, LGBTQ youth programs, residential care facilities, and mental health services for people living with HIV. And he supported $1 million in funding for Our Trans Home SF to provide housing subsidies to 75 transgender and gender non-conforming San Franciscans. In spring of 2020, Supervisor Mandelman worked with Mayor Breed, the Department of Public Health, and community stakeholders to keep Lion Martin Health Services open through the COVID-19 pandemic, ensuring the city's most important provider of trans and gender non-conforming affirming health care would not close amid a global health emergency. Please welcome our dear friend, Supervisor Rafael Mandelman. Hey, everybody. Um, Hello, um, I am Rafael Mandelman, District 8 Supervisor, and thank you, Vitka, and thank you, Health Right 360, uh, for all that you do in San Francisco and throughout California um, for, uh, to, to ensure healthcare for our most vulnerable. Um, it is a tremendous honor for me to be here uh, this evening with you all. Um, of course, we all wish we were doing this in person like every other Pride uh, event um, that's happening. Um, uh, happily, there are a lot of uh, virtual Pride events for folks uh, uh, to enjoy. And of course, there are plenty of protests going on and that's absolutely in the spirit of Pride. Um, uh, whether you're, you're out protesting or sheltering in place, um, I hope you have a, a truly wonderful uh, uh, Pride uh, 2020. Um, Phyllis Lyon uh, was my constituent. Um, and uh, I had the honor of getting to know her. Now, by the time I got to know her, um, she was a sweet little old lady. Um, but of course, she and Dell uh, kicked a whole lot of ass um, during their lifetimes, um, had uh, really um, helped transform um, the world and, and make uh, the world different for queer people. Um, and uh, it, it is, uh, she, had, she lived a long life. Um, it, it would have been nice for her to live uh, a little bit longer and see the Supreme Court decision um, that happened uh, last week um, that was, uh, I think, very much the result of, you know, the work that, that Dell and Phyllis and their generation 
did and the um, and the groundwork they laid for uh, you know generations of queer people to come. So uh, with you know tremendous gratitude um, uh, to Phyllis Lyon. Um, there was a rally just before Shelter in Place started uh, to save Lyon Martin, organized by Lyon Martin workers, and um, and I'd said at, at that point that I couldn't possibly allow Lyon Martin to close because uh, you know Phyllis was my constituent, and um, now we absolutely have to keep uh, we must keep uh, Lyon Martin open um, to honor the legacy of of, of Dell and Phyllis, in addition to all of the incredible um, healthcare. Work um, one of a kind that uh, that, that Lion Martin provides. Um, I do want to thank all the folks who've been involved in, in working at supporting um, Lion Martin all these years. It, it is the little health clinic that could um, and and must continue. Um, and I want to thank Health Right uh, for for providing a, a home um, for Lion Martin and. Uh, to the workers who have uh, insisted that we that we find a way to keep that that clinic going, uh, true to its legacy and the role that it's been playing in, in San Francisco, um, the mayor and DPH have come through so far for us, and we're tremendously grateful for that. Um, I think we're going to need to um, continue to to find the resources to keep this um, this critically needed uh, clinic open um, through this uh, current pandemic and beyond. Um, but uh, with that, I will I will wish you all again a, a wonderful pride uh, with a lot of love and gratitude for uh, Phyllis and for the Lion Martin Health Clinic. Thank you so much, Supervisor Mendelman. You have been an amazing champion of healthcare services in really the the broadest sense, including mental health and substance use disorder treatment for our most vulnerable residents. So thank you forever for our support for your support. Next, we're going to hear from Dr. Patty Robertson. Dr. Patty Robertson is a professor in the Department of Obstetrics, Gynecology, and Reproductive Services at UCSF. She's been an activist in lesbian health since 1978, when she opened up a research clinic at San Francisco General Hospital to study lesbian women and sexually transmitted diseases. She was a resident physician at the time and worked with Sharon Mills, a nurse practitioner, and Lonnie Schilling, an administrator, to find space, supplies, and staff for this very special evening clinic. It became obvious that there were many lesbian and bisexual women who were medically underserved, and to meet the need, these three women went on to found, it was called at that time, Lion Martin Clinic. Please welcome Dr. Patty Robertson. Thank you so much for that kind introduction. I wanna first acknowledge also HealthRight 360 for providing an umbrella for Lion Martin because it's always provided a special environment for patients who are in need of non-judgmental and low uh, cost healthcare in San Francisco. I still occasionally receive letters from women seen 20 years ago through my work at UCSF thanking me for um, helping to champion that cause. I also want to acknowledge that Phil and Dell always showed up to our fundraising events and they're my role models. And so I was delighted to be invited tonight because I, I want to show up for Line Martin and I want to help continue this vital clinic. I reflected on starting the clinic. I was 28 years old. I was a resident physician working like 120 hours a week. And what were the three um, strengths that I could rely on to really get this going I, that I still use today. One was networking, and I was able to convince straight residents to run this three-month clinic with me, as well as um, getting supplies from different faculty without any money. We did this without any money, and I did it by asking, and that little note you saw was from Lily Tomlin, who gave one of our first donations. We didn't really want to cash the check, we wanted to keep it, but we did cash it, but that note you saw earlier was from her and Jane when I invited them over to dinner at our house when they were in town for a show and they turned us down, but they did give tickets to the clinic staff. And adapting, halfway through the clinic, um, the supervisor of the women's clinic at San Francisco General Hospital came back from England 
and was furious when he found out we were using his clinic space in the evening for lesbian health. So we had to go next door to the family planning clinic where there was a more um, adaptive uh, physician in charge and we'd have to cover up the family planning sign each time we had a clinic so that lesbians would actually come into the clinic. So um, from that clinic, we realized that there were so many underserved lesbians in San Francisco who had been in for pap smears, for blood pressure checks, et cetera. So that's when, especially Sharon Mills and Marge Plum showed their leadership in converting this research project into full service clinic. It was a lot of work over the two years to finally open the doors to the clinic. So I would just like to, um, also remind us to keep those values strong as the struggle continues to provide healthcare in a very difficult environment. Everyone's struggling right now in terms of recovery and the surge planning that we did economically, and I assume probably you all are doing the same, but we've learned so much about patient care and patients during this time, the power of Zoom to create relationships and decrease overhead the um, innovation of peer support groups. And I just hope that we have enough room in our planning to keep what we learned that is positive to help the clinic continue to survive during this critical time. So I just would like to thank all of you for the invitation to speak and reconnect tonight and to embrace your plans. Thank you. Thank you so much for your pioneering work, Dr. Robertson. Now, I was a frequent user of safety net services in my younger days in San Francisco. So I was once a patient of Lion Martin uh, Clinic many, many years ago. So thanks for creating a safe space for lesbian healthcare. Back in those days, I'd go for a medical appointment and the medical provider would always say, method of birth control. And I would say, lesbianism. And they would look at me funny. Uh, and it didn't feel very comfortable, but not at Lion Martin uh, Clinic. So uh, thank you so much, Lion Martin Clinic was and still is a safe space. Thank you very much. So here's what our next speaker has to say about herself. I was born to an Army intelligence officer father and a lesbian civil rights activist mother and carry on both of their legacies by working for the United States Department of Peacebuilding. My working career ranged from teaching preschoolers to serving senior citizens. I'm married with two children whom Phyllis and Dell called grand adults, and I have one grandchild. Kendra is a lifelong activist. As you can see, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Please join me in welcoming the daughter of Phyllis and Dell, Kendra Mon. Hi, I'm glad to be here and thank you so much to all the previous speakers. I am not a polished speaker, so I'm a little nervous, um, but I really appreciate this tribute to both Lion Martin and Phyllis. Um, Phyllis and I adopted each other a long time ago and later, much later, we made it legal. Um, and how I first spent time with Phyllis and Dell, it turned out to be their honeymoon week. I spent, I was 11 years old and I spent a week with them. And um, what I remember most is that um, Phyllis was shocked to learn that I had never read Winnie the Pooh books. And so each day she would read some of the Winnie the Pooh to me and introduce me to that. Um, and um, as many will attest, many will attest, Phyllis was fierce as a lion and gentle as a kitten. And she took her last name very seriously. She had cats and lions, pictures and statuettes all over the house. And she was very pleased when Lion Martin was named with her name first, because so often it was Martin and Lion or Dell and Bill. And so 
Ryan and Martin was, was a, a, a treat for her. Um, she, she famously said that they were determined to stick out their first year together because of the cat. They couldn't figure out how to divide the cat. And uh, I still say, thank goodness for that cat, because the same determination is what they used to change the world for the better. Um, among many other things and people that Phyllis and Dell introduced me to were Lion Martin Health Services, where I joined them at two advisory board meetings. And much later after Dell died, Phyllis was having difficulties at home and was diagnosed with dementia at UCSF Memory and Aging Clinic. And much as she was determined to change the world, she was fiercely determined not to change her world and needed no help, thank you very much. But Phyllis's friends, her sister, Tricia, my husband and I knew that we needed help and met a number of times at Lion Martin with doctors Nick Gorton and Don Harbotkin. With their help and with the help of UCSF's Dr. DeMay and other staff, we were able to negotiate the many stages of dementia that many of you in the audience know firsthand from your own experiences. They held our hands through interventions about money management to 24-hour care and hospice. And we are eternally grateful to UCSF and Lion Martin for their support. And we appreciate this opportunity to share that with you. Um, and thank you for honoring Phyllis and Lion Martin today. And it makes it a little easier to let her go. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kendra. Thank you so much for sharing that your story with us tonight. Kendra, you should know that as a once uh, young lesbian in the 1970s, still a lesbian, but no longer young, Phil and Dell were absolute lions, and as you said, lions with an eye, in the community. Their courage was an inspiration to young people like me in the days before anything existed like gay straight alliances in schools. In an age where queer people were shamed and pushed into the shadows, your parents were absolute heroes, so thank you. Our next speaker is another warrior Amazon in the LGBTQ community. Marge Plum is a nonprofit consultant and trainer who focuses on public policy advocacy and organizational and leadership development. She was executive director of Lion Martin Health Services from 1989 to 1993 and then swooped in at a time of need to continue providing support, serving as board chair from 2011 through 2014. Currently living in Omaha, Nebraska, Marge served as the director for the statewide Coalition for a Strong Nebraska, a group of over 100 nonprofits working for public policy solutions to end poverty and secure the Title X awards for Nebraskans. Please welcome Marge Plum. Thank you so much and uh, to all the previous speakers and to Kendra, my heart is with you uh, in your very personal loss. Um, when I started at Lion Martin Health Services, um, it was called Lion Martin Women's Health Services. Uh, and uh, I, I knew of Dell and Phyllis and was quite frankly a little scared um, because of who they were. And it took me a couple of months before I caught up the urge or the, 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 the guts to call them um, to say, hi, I'm the new executive director. And uh, Phyllis, of course, was like, sweetie, it's so nice to hear from you. And Dell was like, well, it took you long enough to call. Um, <laughs> and I never made that mistake again. Um, they took the naming of the clinic very seriously uh, to them. And, and I worked very hard to keep them up to speed on what was going on. It was a great uh, a great honor for them uh, to be, uh, for the clinic to be named after them. Um, when I took over, we were in a, a medical office building on Market Street. We had two um, clinical uh, offices. We had one office that was mine, except one day a week, we were doing HIV testing and counseling. And so I had to leave 
the, the clinic because um, that was the only space uh, for the counselor. Um, so very early we decided we had to get big or go home. Um, and we found a, a clinic on Market Street and uh, raised more money than any of us knew existed um, and built a clinic that was four times the size um, and um, had a, a community space and, and really built the clinic up in a way that made us all very, very proud. One little funny story is um, we didn't have much money and so we closed on a Friday we moved everything to the new space over the weekend and the city, um, uh, um, you know, where they, they were going to give us the final sign off on it. Uh, the city inspector was going to come Monday morning. We had clients starting at noon um, because like everybody needed services. Um, but the plumber forgot to attach the toilet. So over the weekend, the staff, Put a put one of those you know yellow markers across the door saying fresh floor laying and fresh paint, <laughs> and so the inspector just walked by it and and let us start. Um, I don't know what would have happened if he had gone in to try to flush the toilet. That didn't work for a couple of days, um, but we were creative. And what happened during that period though was also what was happening in the movement. Um, HIV was well known and devastating. Uh, the gay male community in particular, um, and we started seeing HIV positive um, women at Lion Martin. Uh, I'll remember, never forget uh, one woman who walked into my office uh, and said that she was, and, and the HIV clinic at San Francisco General was amazing, and her experience as a lesbian with HIV was one day she went in and told her doctor that she had a yeast infection and the doctor said open your mouth um, because that was where gay men got yeast infections uh, when they were HIV positive. So we knew we had to start doing something different. So we became just so focused on becoming more diverse um, we, um, you know, serving HIV positive women. At one point we had about 50, uh, if I recall correctly, um, doing outreach services to all of the communities uh, in San Francisco, recognizing that identity was not about behavior um, and that, you know, what Patty and others had started could become a safe haven for everyone who was part of our community. Um, we started, um, serving trans um, men and women. Um, and uh, our, our providers just kept keeping up with the changes that were going on. So that part of the Lion Martin experience for me, I'll never forget. Uh, it's a huge part of my own learning about diversity and how to really make sure that your staff reflect who you serve and that who you serve feel safe. Um, when I came back as board chair, um, as Vitka said, um, uh, the board of directors was very close to closing the clinic um, because they realized there was a million dollar deficit um, from the previous uh, administration and half of that was to the IRS, um, which is very serious business. You don't want to owe money to the IRS. And uh, we spent years working with the community and building a community-based board and, um, and talking to everybody we could about what, what should happen for Lion Martin. Um, and uh, we had conversations with VITCA and uh, um, Health Right 360 uh, opened its arms, um, paid the debt. I mean, I, you know, it's, I guess it's not like supposed to be the thing you talk about money, but I have to talk about the fact that they literally paid the million dollar debt that Lion Martin owed. Um, and allowed Lion Martin to move into their space uh, and to be one of their programs. Um, I'll, I, I know it's tough running health clinics. At the point that we did that, we had about 25 funding sources. We had grants, we had at least a dozen payers. Um, and if you've ever managed healthcare with 25 different funding sources, each paying a different part of a person, um, it is really, really complicated and really, really hard. So um, I, I will forever be in debt to HR 360. And, um, and, and Phyllis and Dell, um, I, I, uh, 
those were sad times uh, when I heard that they had passed um, and when Phyllis passed um, because they were um, such warriors and, uh, and Lion Martin meant so much to them uh, through all its growth. And um, it was, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's actually, it's pretty amazing to have known them and to have had many years of being able to meet with them and sit with them. Um, and it, I wish everyone in our community could have had that experience because they were just incredibly special women, really incredibly special. So thank you for inviting me here. Health Rate 360, thank you for everything you've done for Lion Martin. Um, and, uh, and thank you to the city um, for stepping in. Um, it, it is hard to keep funding for such a small clinic, um, which it is in comparison to Kaiser, to UCSF. Um, and it needs the city to take care of it um, so that it can continue. So thank you to the city uh, officers for, for being on this uh, uh, and this as well. Thank you, Vitka. So much, Marge. Um, you have always uh, come to the aid of um, Lion Martin Health Services whenever asked, um, and you've been such a strong and stalwart supporter. Um, so thank you so much. Now our next speaker doesn't need an introduction, but I'm delighted to be the person who gets to do it anyway. People think MLB stands for Major League Baseball, but for me, MLB means only one thing, Mayor London Reed. As a national figure, we are familiar with her compelling story and her dedication to public service from her work as an executive director of the African American Art and Culture Complex, to her work in the San Francisco Redevelopment Agency as a commissioner, to fire commissioner, to district five supervisor, to president of the board, and now to mayor. Watching CNN last Sunday, I was so proud to see our mayor highlighted as one of, as one of four impactful women on an hour long special entitled Mayors Who Matter, a town hall on race and COVID-19. And I will always be grateful for, to the mayor for recognizing before all mayors of major cities in the US that COVID-19 was a serious threat to her beloved city and courageously ordering the shelter, the citywide shelter in place. It was a very courageous thing to do and we are the better for it. So thank you. Please welcome our esteemed mayor, San Francisco's 45th mayor, the elected official who has given the number 45 back its dignity and respect, the Honorable Mayor London Breed. Thank you so much, Vika, and thank you to um, everyone uh, for joining us here today to support just an incredible organization. Uh, for all the incredible work that Health Right 360 does to uh, support uh, the community and the work you do with Lion Martin uh, and what you continue to do to serve this community, I am really excited to be here with all of you virtually today uh, during this unprecedented time as we face a public health crisis and our LGBT community is still under attack, we know from sadly a hateful and misguided federal administration. Uh, but love wins once again, as we uh, just recently, the Supreme Court and the decision uh, to, that was ruled that people can't be discriminated against in the workplace based on gender identity or sexual orientation, and that uh, our LGBT community is protected uh, by the 1964 Civil Rights Act. Um, we have come a long way, and we gotta still keep fighting, but this is a huge victory uh, and the work that you all do to help keep people healthy and safe is so important, especially in light of what we know is happening with COVID-19. Um, and providing professional competent healthcare workers to lesbian and transgender people, uh, it is really significant. As someone um, who deserves uh, the utmost care, the utmost treatment, and someone who is there to work to address the challenges that we continue to face. I'm proud that Lion Martin and Health Right 360 are stepping up to put an end to discrimination against women, lesbians, and transgender people in our healthcare system. Uh, we need more medical providers like you that are providing trained uh, professionals to make sure that they provide the sensitive and safe and compassionate environment 
so that people who need health care, uh, people who need support, and someone who understands the challenges that might exist uh, are there for them to address their uh, health care needs. So together, we're helping uh, communities uh, find access to uh, health care in this, in this way, and it is truly amazing. And I, I just want to take also a moment to uh, talk just a little bit about uh, Phyllis and Dell and, and, and to just uh, say how fortunate we are uh, that although they're no longer with us today, um, what they did, uh, what the, the path that they set to support uh, the LGBT community, you know, generations will continue to benefit. The opportunities that they have made available, the understanding that they had uh, at a time where this community was not treated fairly, was discriminated against, and, and didn't get what the, this community deserved like any other person on this earth. Um, Phyllis and Dale were incredible. They were inspirations. They really uh, opened the doors of opportunity that made it possible uh, for Lion Martin and other places like this to exist to support the LGBT community uh, as far as uh, compassionate and competent health care. So their legacy lives on through their daughter, through this community, um, and through this organization. And so during this coronavirus pandemic, um, we have needed this organization more than ever. Uh, and I know that more recently, we had learned of some challenges around the finances of the organization. Uh, and the way that I learned about this is I got a call from Supervisor Raphael Mandelman. And Supervisor Mandelman uh, told me about, I guess there was a, a protest or something going on. And I was like, wait a minute. This is before coronavirus when we discovered that there were some, some challenges financially. but you all know the importance of this organization and what they do for people who have um, a lack of uh, access to uh, health care that serves their needs. And so it was not even a question as to if we were going to do something. It was like, what are we going to do and how are we going to make sure that we save this organization? And it was because of the leadership of Supervisor Mandelman that we were able to act quickly uh, to provide the resources necessary uh, to, to make sure that uh, Lion Martin continues. This place is, is an institution um, that is necessary and has been instrumental, especially in the support um, of our transgender community. And I think that uh, what we were able to do is just a small part of what we need to continue to do to make sure that this location is not lost to the community. So this fundraiser today uh, is an opportunity for people to give, uh, to support. Uh, we know uh, that the city is, has a responsibility as well to be a part of the solution. And I, as mayor, am committed to continuing to do all we can to fund Lion Martin, uh, to make sure that it, its legacy and what it was built on uh, continues to serve the community. As we celebrate the 50th anniversary of Pride in San Francisco, so many challenges, so many battles, um, and, and here we are still fighting those battles, still fighting the battles of equality um, for our LGBT community, for our African American community. But the good news is we're not alone in these fights. The good news is that as an African American woman in this city, I, I have never felt the amount of hope and inspiration that I feel at this moment right now for the future of our country where we should not need a Supreme Court decision to validate what we know about all human beings in this world. I don't care what your sexual orientation is, what your gender is, we should not be discriminated against because of our race or because of who we are or who we love. I am hopeful that we are going to get to that place because we have people like Phyllis and Dale who set the path for us to follow and for us to continue to fight to make sure that the next generation has it a lot better than what we've had to struggle through to get us to this point. I know that I stand on the shoulders of my grandmother and so many civil rights leaders and people who came before me to make it possible for me to serve in this capacity as the first African-American woman mayor. 
Yes, we still have more work to do, but I'm confident in this new movement at this new time that we're gonna get to a better place. So let's make sure that we do everything we can to continue to support Lion Martin and Phyllis and Dale's legacy by investing in this organization, by making sure that it has the resources and the support that it needs to continue to remain available and vibrant for the communities that we know need it the most. You have my commitment. I'm happy to be here with you. I am truly indebted, especially to HealthRight360 for the work that they have done over the years to not only support so many folks in my community, but to personally support my sister uh, in her battles uh, over the years. So I'm just grateful that so many people continue to do the work, especially you, Vika. Uh, Help Right 360 has been an incredible partner. When we have needed your help with a number of organizations, including Lion Martin, the Haight-Ashbury Free Clinic, merging with Walden House and what you have all done to continue to provide resources to people when they get to a place where they have no one to turn to, you have been there and we are gonna to continue to make sure that we are there. This is what making sure that a community is coming together and growing and thriving and, and, and really making a difference. You are making the difference. Uh, and I'm just proud to be a small part of working with you to make that difference. So uh, congratulations on this incredible work. Supervisor Mandelman and I are here to be as supportive as we can from the city side even in the midst of the challenges that we face with the budget, there is no question that we have to continue to support the work that you do. Uh, so thank you so much for being a part of this organization and making sure that this organization continues uh, to live up it, to its legacy of the two incredible women uh, for which it is named. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, Mayor. You're uh, inspiring. Uh, thank you. That was amazing. Uh, I want to thank you for your support of Lion Martin Health Services. <laughs> it's no secret to friends and supporters of Lion Martin that over the last 40 years, there have been a lot of times that the clinic has had its share of campaigns and funding drives to keep its doors open and the lights on. And this year was no exception. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart, on behalf of all of our staff and the people we serve and the communities we serve, for giving the clinic uh, the breathing room that it needed during the COVID-19 crisis. And I know that we can count on your continued support of the LGBT community and of Lion Martin Health Services, so thank you. In 2005, Dr. Nick Gordon approached the medical director of Lion Martin Health Services and offered to organize and strengthen Lion Martin Healthcare Services for transgender men and women. Over the past 15 years, with Dr. Gordon's amazing and tireless support the support of many members of the trans community, Lion Martin Health Services evolved into one of the first and one of the leading community health centers providing gender affirming care for trans and gender non-binary people. Our next speaker is also a pioneer in transgender rights. Cecilia Chung's community service spans nearly two decades. As a founding producer of the Trans March, she helped organize one of the world's largest annual transgender events, which has since been replicated in cities across the United States. She became the first deputy director of the Transgender Law Center and is credited with shaping the organization's mission and programs. Mayor Gavin Newsom appointed Commissioner Chung to the Human Rights Commission, where she served for seven years. Commissioner Chung is the Senior Director of Strategic Initiatives and Evaluation at Transgender Law Center and a Health Commissioner of San Francisco, as well as an internationally recognized civil rights leader who advocates for HIV AIDS awareness and care, LGBTQ equality, and social justice. Welcome, Commissioner Chung. Um, well, well, thank you for that, um, that introduction. So that makes me realize that, oh, I must have written that bio last decade. <laughs> like, well, maybe it's not a bad thing to like stick with the 20 because then I'm 10 years younger. Um, and thank you again for inviting me to, um, to speak. And, and I'm glad that um, 
Vitka, you mentioned um, Dr. Gordon, and I think that uh, maybe some people didn't even know that um, Dr. Gordon is also the primary care doctor for Phyllis and Dale. Um, and I think that, you know, that's really speaks to like the spirit of San Francisco. Um, Line Martin is not just a namesake clinic and, and Dale and, and Phyllis are more than giants, you know, like they are more than pioneers. They are the beacon of light, you know, like in, in the time when, you know, LGBT people were still being criminalized. So this clinic means a lot more than just a clinic. It is, you know, a symbol of what San Francisco stand for, um, especially in this kind of climate. I still remember um, when I was on the Human Rights Commission, you know, like we um, were like, we had a panel on um, lesbitopia um, because we are seeing that, you know, like there are fewer and fewer spaces, you know, for lesbian um, to find their community. Um, and I think that that's continued to be a challenge because a lot of um, communities have moved um, to the virtual space. Um, but it is also really important to remember that lesbian together with Phyllis and Dell play a huge part um, in this, this, this city's survival of the HIV epidemic. Um, and with all that, I think that it's really important for us um, to continue to remember that this is a symbol of San Francisco when so many things are getting challenged. Yes, you know, like we have um, a Supreme Court um, victories on, um, on um, being protected, LGBT people being protected. But at the same time, we have a hostile administration. They're trying every way they can you know, to take, a, take our rights away, you know, all in the names of religion. Um, and so that was kind of a whiplash because like, Friday, we had the 1557 rules, and then Monday, you know, like we had, you know, like we had the win, um, and it was surreal. But that fight is not over, because right now, there's still a case on reproductive justice sitting in Supreme Court, waiting for the decision um, to be announced. That tells us we still have a, a lot of work to do, and that tells us why it's important for Phyllis and Del Martin's um, namesake clinic to continue to shine. Um, it's not just a model. It's a model of San Francisco. It's part of the model of um, universal healthcare in San Francisco because we seem to have a ways to actually fill every single gap that you know, the uninsured have in the city. Um, and so I really want to congratulate you um, on um, finding the resources in the city coming through to support um, the clinic. I, I actually was pretty shocked when I asked, you know, like um, if we were giving fundings to um, Lion Martin and I, the first sense I got back was no. Um, and well, we can't say that anymore. So it is my duty to make sure that LGBT services continue to be defended um, as, you know, the, um, as the health commission and also, you know, as someone who actually grew with um, Lion Martin, I came here in the 80s and, um, and I've been calling the city home since then. And to really see the change, to really witness how Lion Martin transformed from a women's clinic to a clinic that served both women and transgender people. Um, it's really inspiring. Um, I am... I have nothing but admirations um, for all the people that make it happen. And I have a lot of admirations for the lesbian community who continue to support San Francisco, who continue to show resilience and call um, San Francisco home in, you know, in this kind of climate. Um, and I hope that you know, we can do you right and continue to make sure that um, we have a strong, and vibrant community in San Francisco. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Chung, for your years, 30 years of commitment to serving the, uh, L the LGBTQ community uh, and for your support of Lion Martin Health Services. Lion Martin Health Services serves on the front line of the community's response to the COVID-19 pandemic, providing specialized medical, 
in behavioral health services to low-income transgender women, lesbian, bisexual, and queer cisgender women, and transgender men of diverse sexual orientations. Our medical and behavioral health services identify and treat those at risk and with symptoms, but that doesn't mean other symptoms that patients have been experiencing have gone away throughout this pandemic. In fact, depression and other behavioral health issues, as well as addiction issues, have only been exacerbated by this crisis. Tonight, as we celebrate 40 years of Lion Martin Health Services, 50 years of pride and the trailblazing life of Phyllis Lyon, we ask for your support. I hope you will consider making a donation to honor the life of Phyllis and the celebrations uh, by going to www.healthright360.org uh, www slash donate and making a gift des designated to Lion Martin Health Services or email your pledge to donate at healthright360.org. And if you want to get cool stuff, you can participate in the online auction. All funds raised will directly help our work on the front lines at Lion Martin Health Services. I want to thank our generous sponsors. I want to thank the LGBTQ plus community for always coming out to support Lion Martin Health Services. I really want to thank the amazing staff who have always organized and advocated on behalf of Lion Martin Health Services and our patients. And finally, I want to thank all of you for joining us tonight. Thank you very much. I can learn to understand.